Welcome. Some of you may be a little confused about some of the terminology that I will use. So here is an introduction to both the word chakra and prana. You will hear them often during the journey through the chakra dance and meditate. Now the word chakra comes from an ancient Indian language known as Sanskrit. Chakra literally means vortex, spinning wheel or circle. Chakras are the major centers of spiritual power in the human body and are viewed as circles of energy which balance, store and distribute the energies of life all throughout our physical body along the subtle channels called nadis in the body. Now the subtle body is the non-physical body, or otherwise known as our soul or spirit, which overlays our physical body. These chakras or energy centers function as pumps or valves, regulating the flow of energy through our wonderful, amazing energy center. The functioning of the chakras reflects decisions we make concerning how we choose to respond to conditions in our life. We open and close these valves when we decide what to think and what to do and through the perpetual filters we are choosing to experience our life through. The belief in chakras began in India and is utilized in Ayurvedic medicine. Now, the earliest records of Ayurvedic dates back from around two and a half thousand years before Christ. The word Ayurvedic comes from two ancient Indian words, Aya meaning life and Veda meaning knowledge. Ayurvedic or life knowledge medicine may be interpreted as knowledge on how to lead a healthy life. Ayurvedic medicine observes illnesses as unevenness in our bodies, which may be treated with a mixture of meditation, physical exercise and herbal treatments. Now, our chakras are not physical. They are aspects of consciousness in the same way that auras are aspects of consciousness. The chakras are more dense than the auras, but not as dense as the physical body. They interact with the physical body through two major vehicles, the endocrine system and the nervous system. Each of the seven main chakras is associated with one of the seven endocrine glands and also with a group of nerves called a plexus. Thus, each chakra can be associated with particular parts of the body and particular functions within the body controlled by that nerve plexus or that particular endocrine gland. Now, if you could imagine chakras of circles of energy flowing all the way through your body, these circles of energy will assist in the running of your body mind and soul. If a chakra is not performing correctly, this may cause our physical health, mental health and our spiritual selves to suffer. Now, although there are a great many chakras in our body, we will only introduce you to the seven major chakras that run up and down the central meridian or sashuma. These chakras start at the base of the spine and move upwards to the last one at the crown of the head. Now the energy vortexes continue up into the heavens above and straight down into our mother earth. They coincide with the positions along the spinal cord of the major nerve ganglia in our physical body. Now, when you feel tension in your consciousness, you feel it in the chakra associated with that part of your consciousness. We experience the stress and in the parts of the physical body associated with that chakra. 
Where you feel your stress depends upon why you feel stress. The tension in the chakra is detected by the nerves of the flexors associated with that chakra and transmitted to the parts of the body controlled by that plexus. When the tension continues over a period of time or to a particular level of intensity, the person creates a symptom on the physical level. The symptom speaks a language that reflects the idea that we each create our reality and the metaphoric significance of the symptom becomes apparent when the symptom is described from that point of view. Thus, rather than saying, I can't see, the person would describe themselves as seeing something. I can't walk means the person has been keeping themselves from walking away from a situation in which they are unhappy and so on. But this is far beyond the realm of this course to go to that kind of depth. I would suggest that if you are interested, then you actually go find somebody in your local area who teaches and manages and works with chakras in their clinical practice. In Australia, many massage therapists and many counsellors work on this level. Now, the symptoms serve to communicate to the person through their body what they had been doing to themselves in their consciousness. And when the person changes something about their way of being, getting the message communicated by the symptom, the symptom has no further reason for being. It can be released according to whatever the person allows themselves to believe is possible. Now, other than chakras, you will hear me talk about prana, breath. Now, prana accumulates between the base of the heart and the neck. It is linked to the function of the lungs and to inspiration. The motion of prana is accumulation and expansion of the lungs and of the internal energy. When you are full of delicious prana, you are ready for life. You are charged with energy. Your respiration is open and your mind takes on a sense of positivity. Ordinary breath, like the most manifest symptom of life, is only the obvious aspect of prana. And most Westerners do not breathe well. We take these shallow little things. Now, you need to know that prana has its Chinese equivalent in qi or the Japanese ki. Prana refers to a whole spectrum of subtle energies moving, manifesting at the coarse material level as ordinary breath which we take, the air through our nostrils, our whole organism, not only the nostrils, participates in receiving the finer alchemical substances, impressions and energies. The substances we take in from the whole field of prana depend on the depth and equality of our attention. I ask you please to be patient with yourself if you are a novice and just beginning with this. Please don't become frustrated with yourself. I am an accomplished yogi and I can assure you there are many times where I get caught. I become out of control, I shallow breathe, I lose focus and things happen. And then I draw myself back in, 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 refocus and settle. What is accomplished by an advanced yogi who breathes in and utilizes is not the same as the breath in by a novice. However, if you are patient with yourself, over time you will feel the swelling, the movement, you will almost feel you will feel 
the pranified oxygen flowing, air being, filling all the space of your being. Abundant blessings on this beautiful journey that we are about to undertake together through the seven major chakras of our body.